be able to be part of, not, not graduating or attending part of Brooklyn College, but ever since I got here as a professor in the, in the television and radio department, uh, I, I feel like I've become part of a Brooklyn College family. And uh, my husband teaches in the biology department, so we literally are a Brooklyn College family. Uh, but we've been so welcomed by, by different members uh, Marla, Marty, and people in the television radio department. And one of the first people I met when I started working here uh, was Vinny Favalli. And he's the kind of guy, I, we just had, we just, I'm also a comedian. My show is comedic. He, uh, we all know he works with David Letterman. He's a comedian himself. Um, he's been instrumental in developing some of the funniest things that are out there, uh, as you will read, as we will read when we go over his bio. But we just had this, this, Italian guinea rapport, and, you know, and, and the thing that was so great, um, as Brandon said, um, he was the host of the very first Alumni Awards, and he said, hey, why don't you help me with this? And I said, oh, I'd love to. So we were writing jokes, etc., and uh, we were going to meet before, and, and I just really like working with Vinny. He has that kind of, he'd give you the shirt off his back kind of a, kind of a personality. But as it turns out, and you may remember this, Marla, Vinny came to the first Alumni Awards in a t-shirt <laughs> and jeans. <laughs> Perhaps it wasn't jeans, I think it was. Um, so, lucky for us, my husband, um, who becomes more of, um, you know, Rodin's penseur when it comes time to pick out clothing, brought a number of outfits. <laughs> And if you look at the back of your program tonight, you will see a picture of Vinny standing at a podium much like this, wearing the tie that my husband is now currently wearing. And graciously returned with the lunch for me the following week. So, um, Vinny just, just been, uh, He's just, uh, he's, I don't know, he's just that kind of guy, you know, he's that kind of guy. And, and even, he has achieved so much. I want to kind of go over some of the things he's achieved. You can read right in your piece. His, his career has been incredible. He's been in the entertainment industry for over 30 years. He graduated Brooklyn College with a broadcasting degree from the TV radio department, my department. Um, began his career at WNBC. I can't say that. Right. <laughs> okay. um, I just, there's so much here. You know, uh, uh, Vinny uh, crossed paths with David Letterman, and he, David probably fell in love with Vinny just as I did, just as people do when they meet Vinny. But also, part of, part of his, his working resume here is he was a part of a small group of executives who left WNBC to launch MTV Networks. Ooh. So that means the Vinny is indirectly responsible for the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Despite that, <laughs> he also headed up the broadcast operations for a recently launched uh, cable channel A&E which means he's also indirectly responsible for Duck Dynasty. <laughs> so, uh, bring that up a little bit. He is responsible, uh, you know, he, he joined HBO, he's the co-creator of The Real Deal, The 800 Club. He, he was one of the original founders of Comedy Central, the home for comedy today. And I would argue the home for very important subversive political comedy, which is one of my favorite things. So um, we have Vinny to thank for that. Um, he has a very long and distinguished resume that has not quit. He's currently um, creating, and he's co-wrote a musical called Hereafter, Hereafter the Musical, which this weekend, after, to, what is it, Thursday, then there's tomorrow, then there's Saturday, <laughs> is opening um, off-Broadway. It's really on-Broadway, but it's off-Broadway. It's something about, I don't know, you gotta have a certain number of seats, and they count, and there's a thing. But really, the man has created and launched a Broadway musical taken from stories out of his life that I have seen, had the pleasure to see, and um, had the pleasure to be partially involved with one time. That's a whole other yeah. story. But I think it was my idea to put the Kleenex on every chair. 
because the, the, the piece you're after is so moving. And I just think it's, it's a testament to the type of person that Vinny is, that he can be both funny, he can launch all these very important things, and he can write things that are so creatively moving that you have to pass out tissues to the audience of 70, 80, there's a lot of tissues. The tissue people should really be supporting, are you? Let's get that in here. Okay, so without further ado, it is my very, very, it is an honor for me, a very, and a pleasure to present the Alumnus of the Year Award to Vinnie Favalli, class of 1982. This is incredible. Um, so I have to thank some people here. First, I want to thank my wife, and my, my wife Debbie and my son John. This is their first time on the campus and I was so proud to show them. And uh, if you check our Instagram feed, you'll see a steady stream. <laughs> Ashbrook Brooklyn College is awesome. <laughs> uh, so I, um, like one of our fellow honorees, uh, so the one thing I had in common with uh, Mr. Tanger is amazing achievements. Uh, it took him 60 years. It only really took me four, but it felt like 60. <laughs> so I came to this school, I have to tell you, I came to this school not unlike how Tarzan felt when he was in the big city. Uh, I was so in over my head, you have no idea, you have no idea how great this school is. You guys said a lot of great things, but you have to know it from my perspective, because it truly is amazing. I, my parents are from Italy, so I was the first one born here in America in 1959. I don't think I spoke English for like, till, like for five years, and then when I did, I would help translate for my mom. Uh, when she would go grocery shopping. She still makes fun of me to this day on how I did it uh, in my little uh, butcher Italian. So I went to Catholic school, St. Finn Bar, um, in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, from kindergarten to the eighth grade. Now, when you're uh, from an Italian family like I was, growing up in Brooklyn, Bensonhurst, in the 60s, you know, they trusted you to the Lord. You know, my parents were like, <laughs> them, but they, they were clueless. Uh, they didn't even speak English. I mean, really. It was the of us, and we left in the morning, we'd go to school, and we'd come home, play stickball in the street, kind of that last generation of kids that did that. And then that's, you know, I graduated from St. Finbar. There was not a single conversation with my parents on what I was going to do for high school. I mean, they just assumed the Lord would take care of things. <laughs> they weren't even religious. This is, this is, Bible Belt Lord, this is, we've got other things to do, you have to figure out, so totally clueless, totally clueless, uh, I, I, I didn't know a lot, I, my choices were the Utrecht High School, Lafayette, I heard bad things uh, at that era, my brothers had gone there and they didn't seem to be too happy about uh, their experience there, and I was trying to figure out where to go, and you know, being a blue collar family, uh, you learn a trade, learn a trade. So uh, the only trade school that I could that 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 I could figure out. This is pre-internet. You have to know. <laughs> this is not, knocking on doors. I need a trade school. Um, I discovered William E. Grady Vocational High School. If you know trade schools, you don't go to college for the trade school. You know, you, you try not to get arrested. <laughs> And how old are you when you're in the ninth grade? Like what? 15? 13. 13. 13. This is how dumb I am. I don't even know, right? 13 to 14. So my parents would like, I would walk to the B train and take it to Coney Island and then get the D train to Brighton Beach and walk to Grady. That, I'm like Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that's what I did. But that was my, so I did four years of vocational high school. I was terrified of electricity. So I never <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there were some really great teachers there, uh, but I, again, I was clueless. And it turned out I was so such a bad student that when I graduated, they they said, "Look, we're going to give you a diploma because you came here, but you won't get the electrical degree." <laughs> of going there is to get something out of the way. So at the time, um, I was lucky enough to have a girlfriend. I wasn't, I wasn't that dumb. Uh, and this guy was amazing, uh, Joe Whalen, and he wanted to know what my plans were. No one had ever asked me that before. So I'm like, like, what do you mean my plans? I'm going to get a job, not an electrical. Uh, and I'll make some money, and maybe I'll marry your daughter if you let me. But uh, he goes, no, you should well, you should go to college, and you should go to Brooklyn College. 
And he had been doing some work with Brooklyn College at the time, and I was like, okay, I'll check it out. Uh, and I went to Brooklyn College. So what I tell you, to go to Brooklyn College when you like graduated a vocational high school, <laughs> Nine years of the education was mainly religious. So not a lot of academics. I was in way over my head. I was Tarzan in the big city. I was, I was so clueless. Uh, I took a philosophy class, a true story, and while waiting for the class to start, I, I was reading a paperback book, which was the story of Saturday Night Fever. Which is, <laughs> you can't get any lower than that. <laughs> of a movie, the teacher came up to me, with, and, and I, her name escapes me, but she truly was a, an angel. She takes it out of my hands and she said, I think we could do better than that. She didn't say it in any kind of condescending way, and, and on some level I knew she was right, and it, it was hard. It was really, really hard because I came in with nothing, and I, I hold my whole life to Brooklyn College. I, I, I was a senior year. Thank you. It's true, it's true. I, the teachers were so patient, they were so great. It was like, where has this been my whole life? I mean, this was really, the first time I had gone to school was, was college. Um, and the, the, everyone was so kind, and, and in my senior year, I was um, lucky, well, no, see, again, because I was like so busy going to school and then going to work, I didn't really enjoy it the way I should have. I, you know, walking around the campus today, you know how beautiful it is, and how great it would have been to just spend hours and hours after classes and on the quad. I did that sometimes, but mainly I jumped on the train to go sell men's clothing at Ben Hill Clothing Store in Cambridge, Brooklyn, because that's what I did to pay the bills. Um, but I remember my, I had majored in broadcasting, in television and radio. It wasn't broadcasting, it was TV and radio. That's what radio meant something. And, and, and newspapers, they, 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 they taught us about that too. And I remember in my, in my senior year, there's always like some kids in your class that just, they just, know more than you and everything you know they just know more about life and there was this one guy who i now actually work with years later but i remember at the time he had this cool satin jacket and said wabc and i'm like how the hell, how did you like what world are you living in that you get to wear a jacket like that like how do you he goes well, i did an internship like, what's an intern i had no idea what that now this is 1980 79 so internships back then really weren't a common thing like they are now. But they, he told me about it, so I, I think it was James Daly might have been the professor, and I went to him to inquire, what is this internship that these people are talking about? And he sent me up at WNBC, <laughs> and an internship there um, for like six months, and it was amazing, and I was on time every day, and I remember having a meltdown. I, I, I'm gonna wrap this up right now, but I remember near tears talking to my girlfriend at the time saying I was just offered this internship but if I take it I'm gonna literally have to cancel classes because I can't I, and I had a job and I was like I, I said yes but I, I just made the biggest mistake of my life so but I, I ripped everything up I ended up going to a lot of night classes I did the internship and then uh, the internship was over and about a week later they, they called me back and said you were great the person you were working for just quit, the job is yours if you want it. And, and, I, and I never looked back. I mean, from that led to my career, one thing led to another, and really, it all started here. So thank you very much.